Okay, welcome back to the channel. I haven't slept in three days, by the way. This is just a little extra information for you. Today we are doing a sit down to discuss a topic that um, I was kind of surprised that people wanted to hear more about. Can we move your phone? It's embarrassing. Her phone is so damaged and she refuses to get a new one. I'm going to Not put refusing. that off the screen. I'll, I'll do it. So today we are going to talk about why we took technology away from our kids and our painful life without it. And actually, it all started when Gary made a reel on Instagram talking about how he implemented this rule of no technology in the household. Now, I'm sure so many parents will understand our pain because we got to this point where we really saw that the kids were behaving like maniacs. So Gary decided to put his foot down and completely ban technology in the household. I cannot tell you my position on that. When I first heard of this rule, I kind of rolled my eyes being like, sure, because we've done it a hundred thousand million times. Yeah. I've done it a hundred thousand million times but and you then, also, you, and but then you, you break. No, you, you didn't give it to follow them. up with that. D don't say that. You didn't follow up with those times as much as you follow up this time. So can you tell me a little bit about like what happened? I mean, look, w you and I were in the media business and we're in the content business. And I have another YouTube channel with over 4 million subscribers. And I very much understand how content works, especially how content works on the internet. When it comes to content that's created for kids, there's basically two reasons why kids would consume content, or there are two reasons actually why publishers would create content. One is to enrich the lives of children and to educate children and just, you know, overall have a positive effect on children. And the second reason they would do it is to make money. Unfortunately, from what I can see, the majority of the content out there for children uh, ranging from people who are just, you know, making content from home and throwing it up on YouTube to these huge multi-billion dollar public companies, they are creating content for your children to consume to make money. And the way that they make more money is to increase watch time. It's to increase the amount of time the kids will spend consuming the content. In order to do that, they have to make sensational content that keeps the child engaged. Watching actors uh, perform in a, you know, in a television show behaving correctly behaving nicely be, you know doing just doing well overall that's not what keeps a child interested what keeps a child interested is bad behavior um you know being not even interested intrigued right because they right. don't see it every day that's not something that they see or so they you know surprises them and they kind of get glued to the tv watching it i started paying more attention to the content that our kids were consuming and aside from the YouTube channels where it's made by independents that, I mean, it's it's just terrible, like the, the things that they're saying and doing and, and what they're discussing. But even with the big networks, they create these children's shows and the children just behave badly and mm -hmm. in a disrespectful way to adults. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's any value in this content. As a society, we are allowing and encouraging people to raise our children that are not motivated by the child's well-being, they're motivated by making money. So for that reason, I don't want the children consuming any content on the internet. Because these all look like very innocent shows and like just very, you know, family friendly. And it's true, like when you start actually paying attention to the tone they use or like the, the remarks they make about their parents, about, you know, other adult figures, like it, it became so uh, weird. I, I was screening a show the other day and one of the things that the kids said to their parents, I can't believe you idiots are in charge of my college fund. This is maybe a seven or eight year old actor. So to me, I see that then mm -hmm. happening in our home where our children are talking to us in an inappropriate way. It's not just about how they talk to us, it's in general, mm -hmm. there's very little value in content made for children that's motivated by making money. So when Gary came to me and he's like, listen, we're shutting this down, like this is finished. To me, I think one of my concerns were, well, that's how they communicate with their friends, not necessarily the TV, but you know, when they play, let's say Roblox, you know, having friends online and they share that experience. And today, I mean, a lot of people will kind of relate to it and I think that a lot of the friends of ours that we speak about like banning technology that's one of their concerns as well that today this is the way you know children keep up their friendships and make friends and build that like social circle and be part of that social circle so you know obviously we're speaking about our children there are nine seven uh, and three max is just by default kind of part of that by default part of our one of our children what do you mean no a part of like the ban on technology right because he didn't really uh, but he shouldn't be watching it either it, it affects him too these are very formative years for all three of them i think coco melon is super educational if you ask me 
no the old jokes aside yeah so i mean completely unnecessary and we also start to use it as kind of like you know a crutch you know crutch a, a crutch or something else you, you you're thinking of a crutch anyways you start using it as a crutch they're basically babysitting you and obviously with today's time and age like we're all super busy but i think we kind of started devaluing the importance of being bored and i think that through this exercise we also learn a lot about it but before we get into that so once you decided that this is your stand and you're like valeria we're not doing this anymore no technology i remember you told the boys how did they react do you remember they reacted like little kids would they were whining and complaining no at first they kind of laughed it off because they thought i was kidding and then when i shut everything off and i took the remote controls out of the home and I took away all the devices. An hour later, they came up to me and they realized it was serious. And then it started the whining and the crying. And then an hour after that, they were in the swimming pool. So they took the initiative to get into their trunks and go swimming. And the three of them were in the swimming pool, splashing around and having a great time. And that's kind of what we learned most about this whole experience is that they truly find ways to entertain themselves. It's not always easy, by the way, like they also often get into fights when yeah. they are just like in each other's way. But again, it just teaches them better ways to like manage themselves. So I think that let's get into the questions. Do you feel like your mental health and your concentration have improved? Yes, I feel my mental health definitely <laughs> has improved. The biggest challenge with this was getting everybody, all the adults in the family to, to continue to enforce this because what the kids will do is they'll do little scams. So Jake and Ben come to us and say, well, we understand we can't use technology, but we want to learn Spanish. So can we use Duolingo? So Valeria and myself said, okay, you can use Duolingo. So they take the Duolingo, they're in it for 10 minutes, and then they're playing Roblox and, and watching all kinds of you know things that, that, uh, that aren't appropriate. So that's the toughest part. The toughest part is to get all the adults uh, participating. And I can tell you that after about a month, of no technology, the kids were on a different wavelength. And then what happened is a family member took Jake, our eldest, out for a few days. He was given technology from like the whole time and he came back and his behavior, it was erratic. We see the direct result mm -hmm. of, of the consumption of, of, of content. I also want to say that it's not completely gone in the sense that we've now turned it into a positive thing where it becomes a family activity. So a movie night or watching a show. So we now select what the content is that they consume. So we'll pre-screen it and we'll sit with them. So now it's it's actually become a positive thing in our family where it's like, the kids are looking forward to movie night. The kids are looking forward to watching a TV show. Like last night, we started watching a TV show that I like and I thought about it and I think it's appropriate for them and it's educational. So now now they look forward to it. So now in the evenings, we'll be watching an episode until, you know, until we watch the whole thing. What will you do slash say if they want to get social media because all friends have it? So Jake, our eldest, he's already coming to us and saying, I need to make a phone call. So I need to get on, he calls it a phone call. It's a, it's a group chat with kids. Valeria has the app on her phone and he wants to get on a call with them. So what happened was we let him do it. He went on, nobody was there. He just flipped into a video game. And when I walked in on him, he was playing a video game. He can't regulate himself. So, you know, so that happened. But right now it's already happening that they're telling us that all their friends are on some form of technology and they're communicating and they want to be part of that too. So my response to that is ask your friends for their, their moms or dads phone number, we'll reach out to them and we'll arrange a time that you can spend in person versus socializing on technology. That's that's my take on it. How, how do you want to, how do you feel we should address this? I mean, again, I think that nothing is forever. And I think that right now we've identified that for their ages, it does more harm than good. But I think that with every year that will pass and, you know, they're getting older and they're learning more from us and they're letting all these things sink in. I think that they'll reach a point where we're like, okay, they're responsible. They know what to watch. They'll know that when they watch something bad, this is not acceptable. I think that right now, just from seeing them interacting with other people and you know having friends outside of the devices i don't have a worry about that they go outside they play with their friends like gary said i am very open with you know their friends coming over and playing and they're going to their houses so i'm trying to be more proactive there but um it's not forever and i am aware that at the end of the day we do live in a technology focused society like yeah. technology is a very very big part of our daily lives and they will be part of it but not yet. Right now, I feel like those super crucial core... Formative years. They're formative exactly, years. Exactly, formative years. And I don't want that to be what kind of 
disables them, if that makes and sense. And look, when, you know, when this person's asking about what do we say to them when other people, or the other kids their age have access to technology in order to communicate with each other, they still communicate with other kids. They just do it in person. So it's not as if we've shut them off from the world. So we take them out, we go to the park, they have their friends there. They have friends in our community where, you know, we take them to each other's, uh, to their homes and they and their kids come over here. So they don't lack socializing. It's just the medium that at this point we don't agree with. and. Regulating yourself with technology in general, whether you're communicating with people or consuming content, it's hard as an adult. Like I have a problem with it where when I realize how much time I spend mm. on my device, on, on consuming content or interacting with people, it's disruptive to my life. And I'm an adult. Kids for sure can't regulate themselves. So this isn't forever. This is until they get older. They build a base of kind of knowledge and understanding and social skills. And then when they're more able to regulate themselves, they'll be going back. The same thing, people are asking, do you have a deal with your kids asking for it because all of their friends get to have screen time? Honestly, when they ask like why our friends can do it and we don't, I feel like actually they don't ask that too much, but we're very vocal and very open about it. Like Gary shares his views about it. And you know, he actually, when he sat down and watched the show that let's say Jake was watching, he will point out, he's like, you yeah. see this, this specific interaction to you is innocent but what it does to you is it makes you think this is okay so he we not we it's it's very much Gary's like you know role here where he shows them why he thinks this does not serve them he lets them understand why like what he does is protects them and I think that they don't really actually ask like I don't it, see that they, they're it's starting to come down so first of all they react to it very differently Jake our eldest he's much more vocal about being unhappy about the fact that he doesn't get to use technology. Whereas Benjamin, um, our seven year old, he, he just accepts it because he's just more trusting of us that we're doing something in his best interest. So he says he says he understands it. Um, one of the other things I wanted to point out is that, you know, a perfect example, we just got back, we were at a cottage for a vacation. And when we were at this cottage, they didn't have what to do. So they kept asking, can we watch a movie? Because there was a TV there. We said no, we said no. There was a checker set in this cottage that we were staying at. So they started playing checkers and they were playing checkers a lot. They were playing checkers like every day and they really got into it. And that was a very positive thing. We got home, I bought them a chess and checker set and now they're playing against each other. Yesterday I was playing checkers with Jake and I said, hey, like, do you wanna try chess? And he said, no, I don't wanna try chess. And that's just his initial reaction. But then I said to him, if you like checkers, you'll like chess even more. So now he said, okay, let's do it. So now I'm looking for like a chess instructor. I know the basics of it, but now I'm looking for a chess instructor to come and spend the time with him. So in the absence of, te of technology, they were able to discover that they enjoy this game of logic. So then the, the evolution in that is now onto the, a game that's more complex and that will benefit them in terms of their mental development because I believe chess is, is that game. Mm -hmm. So had we not have cut off technology, we would not have discovered that they have an interest in this game and we would not have evolved it into now playing chess. So there's a lot of benefits to this besides saving them from this content that's motivated by uh, corporate greed, if you will. What about TV and movies? So for TV and movies, we, we watch it with them now. So we're gonna consume movies anyways. We're gonna watch stuff with them anyways. Now it just becomes like a, you know, a family, a, a fun family event. Um, somebody asked, um, favorite bucket hat and also the link. So I think that one's, I think that one's for you, Valeria. I don't... This is a good question. What do you do on airplanes and restaurants <clears throat> when the kids get desperate? I was on an airplane with them mm -hmm. and we used technology, but we used it together. I went on the Wi-Fi on the airplane and I went on my social media and I did a Q&A session with Jake and Ben where people were able to ask Jake and Ben questions. So we answered questions, but I regulated it because I was holding on to it. So that's one thing you can do. And the other thing is, like I said, that's now... That's not a very... Uh, well, what whatever. One that's thing you can do to that's one thing you can do. I mean, not everybody <laughs> has people on Instagram who engage with them, but that's something that we did. But look, there's, again, there's, there's a, a little mini chess and checker set little board games there's books i find that they're they're reaching out for books more yeah, often yeah yeah we made sure we got like a like the series of books and they were reading a lot i give them my kindle so they can read it so it's kind of like technology but not really because they can only read on it and that's it we bought like a bunch of card games and different games and they were all just kind of moving along with that with restaurants honestly same thing we just we never really we I, were not bringing our I try ipads to, and stuff no to restaurants, we tried so. not to here's what well, here's what it is like you gotta talk to them so if you're taking your kids out to a restaurant just like you would go out to a restaurant with your partner or let's say with another couple 
You're not just going to sit there and ignore that other couple. You're going to talk. So if you're taking your children out to a restaurant, get ready to talk to them while they're at the restaurant. If you don't want to talk to them, and like, then don't bring them. And then they can sit home. But if they're coming, talk to them. If you but talk to them. sometimes they can't. They don't have anyone to lead them with. I don't think you noticed it, but they talk more with us now. We mm. engage with them more. We have a closer relationship with them. Right. You know, I went out to lunch with a friend of mine who I hadn't seen in many years. And we actually hadn't seen each other since we both became uh, fathers. He has two boys similar to age of, of Jake and Ben. And he was telling me that this is something that at this point he feels he can't back out of it. Meaning his his kids are so into it and they're so dependent on it that he has a problem getting rid of it. And I understand him. I feel that this is a universal problem with parents. I don't know a single parent with kids the age of our kids that are saying that technology is not a problem mm. and the consumption of content is not a problem. Yeah. What were they like on tech versus off tech is the next question. They're more like people. They're more like they were very agitated, especially um, like Jake, I think because he's more sensitive to it. He would be he would get very agitated. And then you can if you tell him to turn off, you know, TV or whatever he was playing, he would get angry and it would just very much spark a whole <laughs> other wave, you know, of emotion and frustration. And they would fight a lot. It was ridiculous it was just like who are these little humans here's another good question how do you manage being so much on your phone as a content creator but saying no to your kids like we're not equal first of all um i think that's an important thing to mention yeah and i think a lot of parents have this misconception that they're equal with their children and it's funny because the kids will say to me, but you're on your phone. And I'll say, but I'm an adult. I do make a conscious effort and we have very open communication. So sometimes, you know, if they do feel like there's, they want to spend time, like let's say we're at dinner. If Gary pulls up his phone, they're like, dad, there's no phones at dinner. So, you know, they will make a remark and that I approve of and I agree with that. But they know our jobs and they understand that what we do is for work and i do keep in mind that i do lead by example but we are not equal like we're adults this is our job and you know we're doing things for your best in interests right but even if you're not doing it for your work so most of the people watching this i'm guessing that they're not they, they don't do social media uh, no but even living. like if you're if you're i don't but know if you do any work you're on uh, emails if, it's not like you're on social media necessarily even if it's not work even if you're looking at it for, for for recreation the point is is that as an adult you have the ability to regulate yourself much better than a child so you don't need to make an excuse. When I said to your mom, like, don't don't give him your phone. She says, oh. yeah, but you're. Oh, OK, change of plans. A microphone died. We're going to do this old school sat now. We're going to do voice note. Do they get bored often? My nephew always says he's bored and I don't know what to do. It's OK, especially when it, this whole thing started. They were saying I'm bored literally every five seconds. I'm not even exaggerating. When they had access to technology, the minute they were off technology, they're bored. And now I feel like they're way better. Like they know that they need to make an effort and come up with something or play or go outside. Like they don't have a choice. So they stopped using that term as often that I'm bored and started just like taking action. I think a challenge, I don't know why this is, but parents think that when a child says I'm bored, it's their parental obligation and duty to find something for their kids to do. My dad used to just kick me in the ass on my way out the door and I figured out what to do. And I, yes, I come from a different generation and I understand that. But what I'm saying is that parents have this guilt associated with their child being bored. If their child is bored, you have a bunch of books, you give them the opportunity to go and do activities. When the child can figure out what to do for themselves, that's when a child starts, I, I believe development starts. This is a quick fix. The technology, it's, it's just a quick yeah, fix. Yeah, definitely. They don't, they don't alleviate their boredom. They just kind of uh, distract themselves from it. Is it a problem for them that their friends, classmates still use electronics? So actually when we were at the cottage, our friends were over and the son had an iPad. And obviously my kids- The son of the friends who The came. son of the friends. And my kids were just like Whoosh. And we asked the parents if they can take it away. And you know what? It was actually a good exercise for them as well. We're not making a huge deal out of it. It's just we prefer them to be away from electronics. If they're going to a play date, I usually let like the mom know, hey, like we prefer them to be off electronics. And usually a lot of people are aligned, especially if you get kids together, you prefer them to play rather than sit and whatever. So when we have play dates, they, their friends stop bringing electronics to our house and they just like, you know, hang out and do things. They don't complain about it anymore because they know 
this is it in our household and that's how it is i have another question it's a very important question how do you style ben's hair just let it go wild and free did they encounter withdrawal so yes they absolutely encountered oh, yeah. withdrawal, and it took a few days it, it took a few days maybe a week do they get comments from kids in school or something i got them when my mom had this rule i, I don't think they're getting this these comments from no. kids. no gary have you ditched conditioner huh <laughs> oh you're trying to be funny <laughs> How can I introduce this concept to my sister whose kids are glued to YouTube? Listen, I'm not gonna lie. It's honestly a lot of work, uh, especially in the beginning. It's like a hump you need to get over. I by no means judge parents that, you know, don't have the emotional and mental capacity to deal with it because life is so busy and so crazy. I don't really know. I feel like whenever people around me used to suggest these kind of things. You know, I wasn't at the right place in my life because I didn't see the negatives in my kids and I was just feeling like this is impossible. You can maybe send her this video, but she needs to get to the point where she's like, okay, I can now deal with this like withdrawal that's gonna happen and everything that's gonna come and I'm, I'm gonna start doing it. Here's, but I feel like when other people come and start preaching, it no, feels like look, preaching. If you're, that's, it doesn't matter what other people it say, but. Me. If you want to get your kids off of technology, YouTube, whatever, there's two things, in my opinion, that you have to do. First of all, you have to cut it off at the source. So you have to take the remote controls for the TV away. Oh, but it's her sister or his that, sister. I'm, not, not, I'm like... not answering this question. I'm saying in general, like if you want to break this habit and take your kids off technology That's a good first step. until they're at an age where they're, they're, they can regulate themselves, and they have a good base and a foundation in, in social behavior that's not associated with a screen. To get that done, in my opinion, what you need to do is you need to first remove all the technology. You need to change the passwords on all of your phones, all of your devices, all of your iPads that are in the house that they have access to. So that's the first thing. Then you take all of the remote controls from the TVs and you hide them. Then what you have to do is you have to sit down, make a list of the things that you know your child is interested in. And then you go to Amazon, you do a search for those keywords and you buy them books and you put those books in front of them, toys, books, whatever it may be. Your house will be a little messier because you're gonna have all this you know the, these kids toys around but it's worth it at first all these books and all these games were sitting and they wouldn't go there and then they start venturing and start like because okay, they have no I'll choice try. exactly they don't they have, have a no choice. choice it's actually amazing so if you start there and you're like oh they're not getting you know they're not biting like trust me they're gonna get there i love the fact that some of you are so invested in our family and you know our family so well somebody asked i wonder what did benny say in reaction to this restriction his reflections on stuff are extraordinary ben is a very logical individual and when <laughs> we but he is i mean he, he has is. his moments when I explained it to him that it's for his well-being and the same way I'm explaining it here, I explained it to him. He said, okay, I understand. And he said, it's not a problem. Jake, of course, is he's on strike. He, you know, he, he tried everything. Jake will be very successful in life because he doesn't take things just as they are. They're like, but why? And why this? And like, here's one scenario, here's a second scenario, and he will negotiate his way out in or out of things. So it was a bit more challenging with him, but he cut up to it. So next question, do you now think screen time can be a tool or still totally against it? It can be a tool if it's supervised. So if you are watching a show with your child and then you can potentially pause and discuss what they're watching or after the show you can discuss it and using technology and using content that's on the internet after you've screened it to create a dialogue with your children after they've consumed it, I think is very beneficial. So screen time does play a role, but you need to be a part of it. I do want to try to see how we can bring Duolingo back to them because they do get very hooked on like having a streak on Duolingo. So they actually practice a language every single day. That's definitely something I want to look into, but we haven't found supervised. You got proper... to sit with them while they yeah. do it. If the books don't work, then I would do supervised Duolingo. How did you manage any angry outbursts? My kids are addicted after school camp. I, <laughs> they're just, they're angry. I don't know. How do you manage? The first, the first few weeks were harder and it, it gets easier. Well, oh, but promise. hold on a second. How do you manage angry outbursts due to in any general, reason? Right. In general, from adults or from kids, due to right. any reason. That's the same way you... You're you, like, you do you. Let no, me know you, when you're done. You, you deal with it like with any angry outbursts. Somebody asked a simple question. Why did you do it? And I'm pretty sure we answered this, but we did this because 
consuming content on the internet at such a young age, unregulated by people who are motivated to make money off of your children's attention is detrimental to their development. That's why we did it, to be clear. I honestly think that it would have been worse if this happened when they were teens. Because our kids are whining because they can't play Roblox, right? It's not that they're on TikTok or on Instagram or anything like that. But the relationship that teens have with social media, like I'm happy that we're doing this now and not later. I don't know. I don't know how I would navigate if they were teens. Yep. Because that is how they communicate and socialize. So that is... And they will eventually. You know, if parents of teenagers are sitting and watching this, I... At what age do you plan on allowing them to uh, access technology? I don't know. It's not a question of age. It's a question of mindset. We'll see. I'll, I'll know. I'll know yeah. when the kids are ready. He will know. You're doing great, babe. Thanks. Such a good father. Honestly, this is just such a interesting time to be a parent and to raise children. It's really um, confusing to navigate. So I feel like everyone is doing the best they can. And I know there's a lot of people out there telling us how to raise our children and what to do. And at the end of the day, like you do the best you can. And that's it. As long as your kids are loved, that's amazing. And if you can, you know, just be a bit more intentional and, and prolong their childhood so they can develop and actually, you know, see the world in a very beautiful and natural way. Yeah. That's I also want to say, do. if you're worried about your kids being behind by the time you allow them to use technology, I wouldn't worry about it. They'll, they'll catch up very, very quickly. Yes. Oh my God, so quickly. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks guys. If you like this topic or you want to hear some other things we can chat about, you let me know in the comments. Ta-ta.